Hey everybody, Chris with Plays of Water. In this video, we're going to be revamping the Mossy Tree Frog Vivarium. Now, I set this up a few months ago. I did a quick uh, introductory vic video on it, and I talked about it in our fish room tour. Now, if you remember, the background was full of Java moss. I had super glued it on there. I had water pumping on it and uh, running through to keep it moist. It was growing. But the problem was it never really stuck very well to the fake background that came with this Exoterra. So we're going to redo the background. I'm going to rearrange and add some more wood in there and try to make it a little more three dimensional looking. It's very flat and I'm just not a fan of it. The humidity doesn't stay in there very well. The frogs seem to be doing all right. They're eating, they're still chirping at night, but I just want something better. Don't we all want to just do better with our uh, with our enclosure? So that's what we're going to focus on in this video. Okay, so this is what they're going to be going in for the next few days while I rearrange and set up their current tank. Now, this is just a smaller version of that Exoterra. And it's actually what I initially was housing them in when they were a little smaller than they are now. There's still plenty of room for the two of them in there. It's just water on the bottom with some lava rock to kind of give it a little more security sense and two pieces of uh, ghost wood. Now, it's always advised when you're handling amphibians to wear gloves. The oil, they absorb everything through their skin, so any oils or even soaps, anything on your hands, they could potentially absorb and be harmful to them. So let's see how quickly I can grab these frogs now. Little guy gave a little chirp when I was holding him. It was so pathetic. Alright, here's the other one hiding here in the water. I'd say this is a lot easier than trying to catch fish. Okay, so we got the background out. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna it is completely dry, which is very important when you're applying silicone. So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna score it all up nice with a knife just to give that silicone a little something extra to grab onto. So once we get this all smeared up with silicone, then we're gonna apply cocoa fiber and sphagnum moss, both which are dry, because like I said, it needs to be dry, because otherwise the water will act as a catalyst and cause the silicone to cure too quickly and improperly. Now I'm not going for any particular pattern, that's just kind of how it's coming out as far as the cuts, but it doesn't really matter because everything's gonna be covered with uh, silicone. So that's what we're looking at. All right, so let's get our silicone ready. GE1 silicone. It doesn't have any anti-fungal uh, properties to it. It's just straight up pure silicone. Now make sure you do this in a very well ventilated area because it is very strong uh, scent to it even for myself. Now I am an automotive technician by trade, so I'm used to chemical smells and oils and all that fun stuff. And even this kind of beats me up. So be very wary and uh, just take the proper safety precautions. You don't want to get yourself sick. All right, hopefully that's enough. I'm just gonna smear it all in here. Now you could use a paintbrush for this process. I just find it's a lot quicker to throw on a pair of gloves and just do it by hand. Get in there, get dirty. Now we got our cocoa fiber. Let's get my knife out of there. And now we're going to actually press everything down. Get some of that excess off so we can go back over it. Make sure we got everything.
And that's pretty much what we got. Now, it isn't 100% coverage, but that's okay. For what we're going for here, it's not that big of a deal because it does look fairly natural on its own. Now, if you were to do this using um, great stuff expanding foam and you want to carve it all out in the tank, then you'd probably want to cover it up a little bit better because great stuff doesn't look very natural. But that's not the case here. So now we'll let that sit for 24 hours and cure and we'll continue then. Okay, so the background is in and this is a bunch of driftwood I had gotten from a giant tank setup I had just purchased. I had played around with it here and there and I think this is how I'm going to like it set up. There's a few, few pieces of vine wood in there. I'm not really sure what type of driftwood this is that came with that tank, but it is very old and it is saturated with water and it's very soft also. Here are two flower pots that I had from some house plants I had bought last year. I'm glad I held on to them because this is what we're going to plant our white ribbon plant and bamboo in. I pretty much just filled them with uh, old fluval stratum. Now the gravel I'm using is the same gravel that was in the old setup. It's just new version of it. I didn't keep the original that was in there. I wasn't too worried about keeping a cycle tank for these guys because I'm not having any fish in there. Not yet anyway. Here I'm just brushing off some of the gravel that got spilled onto the wood. Probably should have used a paintbrush, would have been a little easier. So now what I'm doing here is this is the outlet for the little submersible sun sun pump I have in there. I'm just using black airline tubing so I can direct the water flow to different spots of the enclosure. Now what I did on these lower ones was I just looped them back to each other to kind of eliminate them. I actually ended up looping another two of them once it was set up in the tank just because I was having some water pressure issues okay. for where I was trying to direct the water. There you can see the pump down in the left side. I'm wedging the tallest of the tubes in between the side of the backdrop and the glass. I ended up using a little bit of super glue to secure it better. This is one of the lines I ended up just plugging off. It wasn't really doing much where it was. Here I'm gluing the other pieces in. These two I also ended up looping off. They were kind of redundant since I have that one up high, 
which is going to be spraying water all along the backdrop to keep it nice and moist for the mosses. Spraying water on everything I glued just kind of helps to speed up the curing process. Once you get this uh, super glue wet, it pretty much instantly cures. The glue I used this time is Gorilla Glue Super Glue. Unfortunately, they didn't have any gel type, which made it a little more difficult using the uh, liquid type because it's so runny. But I was able to kind of cover up all the white marks with moss, which you'll see later on. And here it is with all the plumbing run. Here I'm using a little battery-powered battery uh, uh, siphon hose. You've seen me use this in prior videos. It works really well for the smaller setups. Here I'm testing all the uh, the hoses for the water. And now we're going to start planting it. Here are the white ribbon plants I'm potting in those little pots that I filled with the fluval stratum. I then use some river pebbles on top just to kind of secure them a little better so the frogs don't mess them up while they're jumping around in there. Here's the stems of pothos that were in the original setup. trying to set them up so that they kind of grow up the background and the roots can grab onto the cocoa fiber we had applied earlier. Here's some moss I had sourced from the backyard that I had in quarantine for a little while. I had the same uh, mosses in the original setup, which I did also use those pieces. They seem to be much more tolerant of, uh, very, of highly damp conditions. Here you can see I spread it all over the wood. I did end up gluing it down with super glue so that they don't get knocked out into the water by the frogs. Here you get a good shot of one of the water outlets I have running through those uh, black air tubing. As you can see, the background is real nice and damp, which is exactly what we're going for. Here's another plant that I had added, you see it to the right. I had simply just drilled a hole right into the foam background, stuck the plant in, and then wedged in some uh, wet sphagnum moss to help hold it in place. You can see that top hose, what I ended up doing was adding in a few T connectors to help disperse the water along the back there. Okay, so this is what it's looking like up top so far. A lot of this moss isn't glued down yet, it's just kind of laying there. What I had done was I broke up some pieces of cork bark and just super glued them to the back wall. So now, 
we're going to permanently, excuse me, permanently glue down some of this moss where I've laid it. And we got a couple other pieces that we'll also glue down, so let's get to it. spots on the lower half that I'd like to add moss to. Let's get a little piece for in here maybe on that branch. I don't know if it's going to get enough light though. That's moss. Should be fine. So I bought a nice skinny piece here. See how it looks first. Something like that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so you saw me uh, applying the moss, the cork, building the background, uh, kind of setting up the wood how I wanted it, getting it all planted, filling it with water. So now it's been running for a few days. I, I like to do that just so if something isn't working right or I don't like how the water's running, I can, it's much easier to diagnose and fix without any animals in there. And I'm glad I did that also because I did end up changing how I was uh, routing the water in there. I'll uh, show some shots of what I ended up doing compared to how I initially set it up. So, next step is to put the frogs in there. I'm already all gloved up, so let's get them in. So that wraps up the Mossy Tree Frog Paludarium. I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's much more natural looking. The frogs have been in there for about two, maybe three days now. They're acclimating and settling in real nicely. I'm excited to see how the plants grow in on this guy. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate all your support and uh, catch you on the next one.